Okay, um, I ran into a little snag when I uh, went to set up the original 370 gear set in, into my uh, original rear end. And what happened is um, it seemed like the, the uh, carrier was not a sufficient carrier to handle the 370 ratio. It seemed like uh, on the old, like if you had the, one of the old uh, GM 12 bolts or even the 10 bolts, but there was a 2 series, a 3 series, and a 4 series carrier, and it depended on what ratio you had as to what gear set would fit on what carrier. So there was no way I could get an adjustment at all with the uh, 370s in the uh, carrier that was original to my truck. So what I did is um, I got a, a complete uh, third member um, with a, with a uh, 358 ratio, which is the standard ratio for my year with an automatic transmission. And it was in good shape. Now I got this, uh, I started corresponding uh, with this guy, Tyler McSweeney from Geared Up Drive Train in California. And he, he gave me lots of helpful information, and uh, he even took some measurements. Now, this was all just out of the blue, and uh, it was real nice of him to correspond with me like that. And it ended up, he had the, uh, he had the third member, and I got it for a nice price, and uh, was in really great shape. So what I'm going to do at this point is just rebuild this carrier um, with new bearings and set it up and just put it right in my truck which is going to be easy to do so I'll, I'll actually have my original uh, third member and then I'll have this set up here. Um, now in that I'm just replacing the bearings on this I don't expect any real uh, setup headaches. The bearings are, are manufactured to real tight tolerances, uh, half a thousandths or less so um, as far as I'm concerned, when I when I put the new bearings in this thing, I'll be able to use all the original shims, and it's, it should all go together good. So, uh, next step is to pull the uh, pinion out of the out of the out of the uh, third member here, and pull the bearings off the uh, off the carrier here. So, what I'm going to do is uh, I made some different adapters now for this uh, this tool I have here. So this is uh, this is the same tool I used in the other video. I had to make uh, I had to make an extension here to allow the uh, the ram to contact the uh, the piece here, the threaded part to contact this, so I'd be able to pull the bearing up because it, it's it's deeper than the uh, or it's not as deep as the pinion was when I used that. So this this goes on nice. The aluminum pieces are shims to take up any play. These clamshells just go on like this, nice. The retainer goes on. You just have to kind of snug that down. And I'm gonna, I'm just gonna uh, pull this off now. With my impact wrench here. Wrong way. That. I gotta tell you, that makes that easy. I've in the past I've struggled with this kind of stuff, and uh, there's just nothing wrong with this tool. There's, there's the old bearing, zero, zero damage on this. If, if you had a reason to, you could, uh, if you had a reason to, you could reuse this bearing, but uh, I got all new, so I'm not gonna, not gonna do that. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna clean this up a bit. And then I'll go over to my uh, press and, and we'll take a look at uh, at pressing on the bearing. Now to, to get the uh, get the pinion bearing out of the case, okay, I've taken the uh, I've taken the uh, pinion nut off with my impact. It was peened over into the little recess there, so I straightened that out and took that off. The impact came out no problem. Um, what I'm going to do is get my puller and pull the flange off, and then I'll just drive the uh, Opinion bearing. I got this clamp in the vise just to to hold it here, and, and this is going to come right out in a second. This is coming off uh, well easier than some, and 
Not as easy as others. There it is. Nice and easy. And I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to drive the uh, pinion out of the thing here with a soft hammer. That's all there is to that. And there you have that. And what I'll do is uh, there's. Uh, there's a race here that went with the uh, this uh, inner pinion bearing. I've got to uh, I've got to pop out the seal here, and then there's a, there's a uh, there's a race behind that. I'm going to replace the seal, so it shouldn't be any big. Deal. That's that. There's another tapered bearing in there, and there's another race that I'll drive out and replace with a new race. So. Uh, well, we got the, we got the crush collar here, but there's two shims in these Toyota bearings. It's I've got a new crush collar to to put on when I do this, so I'm going to use uh, use my tool again to, to pop off uh, this race. I got to Shells again. Nice. And this goes back on. Make sure I'm all set. Yep. Contact there. Ever struggled with it, these uh, bearings before? That makes uh, that makes easy work of it. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to clean this mess up, and then uh, I'll make a little bit more of the video for you. Okay, I got the uh, I got the carrier assembly all cleaned up real nice. It really wasn't too dirty, so I'm going to press the uh, carrier bearings on. I'm going to spray a little WD on it just for just for the heck of it. I got this spacer, which is specifically made to push this on. Um, and and uh, I got that little piece of metal there to help me do this. And this these will go on real easy. That's nice. I'm just flip her over. Get another bearing here. Little shot WD. And get my little uh, 
plate, which I lost. Oh. <laughs> My assistant saw it there. Uh, I like those girls in those stupid shows on TV with the fingernails. You know they've never worked on a car in their life. My assistant uh, actually gets right in there. It's greasy, so it's, uh, it's not too bad. And that's seated, so that's done. Okay, I got the painting gear all cleaned up, and I got the uh, bearing on it. This bearing on this uh, rear end is huge. I, I can't believe, I mean, this goes into a four-cylinder truck. It's got some beefy bearings in it. Um, the one, the one difference that uh, that this Toyota rear end has over other rear ends I've ever worked on was the uh, the pinion shims actually go behind the race and not behind the bearing itself. So we, you put the pinion shim in the housing and press the uh, race in, and that's how you adjust for your pinion depth. And like I say, I'm not doing anything other than changing the bearing. So uh, basically, this is just. Uh, a rebuild, so I don't, I don't anticipate any problems with uh, with uh, rear end setup. So that's all the way down. That was easy. Went nice for a change, and uh, that's it. All right, I'm going to put the uh, big uh, pinion race in the in the carrier, and I stuck the uh, that's the original shim that went with that, and uh, in a second I'm going to press the race in. Okay, I got the race. Uh, barely started into the uh, housing here. I've got this piece here which uh, will push in the race. It's got a little tapered uh, section that, that uh, registers on the tapered part of the bearing. It sits in there nice. I got this little uh, driver to push it in. I have a handle too. You, you could tap these in but uh, since I got the press I'm going to push it right in. Feel it's, it's going right in nice, nice and even. And that's seated. Now, uh, just the same, I'm going to set the, uh, the small bearing race in the housing. I got a similar type of uh, installer with the tapered uh, register there. I'm, I'm just going to push this right in. Not a lot of force, I just wanted to make sure it started straight, which it did. Okay, and that's that. Next step is to uh, install the uh, pinion and the crush collar and uh, set my pinion preload. Okay, I've got the pinion installed into the housing, and the next thing to do is drop in the crush collar, and that has, on these Toyotas, there's two, two spacers that go in there. With that, so you can just, you can just drop all that down like that. Next piece to go on is the uh, smaller bearing, and that's uh, that's not as much of a, a press fit onto the uh, onto the shaft as some of the other bearings are. Okay, that's 
seated. I, I don't want to hit that um, against the race. So that, that's, uh, that seat is as far as it needs to go. The, um, the flange, when I crush the crush collar, we'll, we'll pull that all up. So that, that's as good as that needs to be. And uh, next step is to install the seal, which I have here. And I've got a, uh, a little installer made to push that on. Okay, now I'm going to install the uh, the pinion seal, and then I'll get around to uh, installing the, the pinion nut. I got just a little driver thing going here. And that's good. Okay. Going here now, I'm going to start the uh, crush car, collapsing the crush car. And if you've never done this before, it takes uh, it takes some power. I've got this little setup here. I've got this piece of heavy material clamped on my vise and onto my workbench on a little metal plate so it doesn't dig into my workbench. I've got one uh, bolt through the flange on the rear end and this other bolt just resting through the flange on the top service. Now ultimately I'm going to have to put the flange from my other rear end onto this rear end because this flange is a little bit different. However, I'm going to just start collapsing the crush car and when I'm coming close to uh, it being tight, I will um, I will stop, and uh, at a later date, I'm going to uh, take pull the, the center section out of the truck, and when I'm ready to put it in, I'll I'll put that uh, I'll put that piece on it, and then um, set it to its final torque. But this is uh, this setup is just to hold this, and it's pretty secure. And I've got this half-inch ratchet now, but I'm gonna I'm gonna need a lot better than this once once that takes uh, hold to the crush collar. <clears throat> that stop right there. And I, and I see I still have all that, and it's got to go quite a distance more. So what I'm gonna get is my uh, I have a big breaker bar that I'm gonna get in a minute. <laughs> okay, this is uh, this is kind of what it takes to to start crushing this thing. And it's a lot of torque, but you just have to keep working at it. The thing of it is, when you get up to the point where so what do we tell the world? Where you're near, where you're near the uh, torque range, it goes like immediate. So you have to be careful. You have to, you have to try it. Now, there's still play in there, so I'm, I'm still crushing the collar, but uh, I'm gonna stop once I get close. Now I'm only going to be able to take a couple more, uh, a couple more pulls on this because it's going to, it's going to come up to the, uh, the torque real quick, and I got to swap the flange up. So I'm using the old nut to do this. I've greased it so it, uh, it's a little easier to tighten because you're, you're really putting some force on this. And it's really, it's coming up on it. Or 
okay, I'm gonna, right there, I'm gonna stop, and that's, uh, that's as far as I'm gonna go until I take the, uh, take the other rear end out of the truck. So, uh, I'll be back.